Hey guys, Reverends here, and we're here with another top 10, and these are fairies. Now, I understand I only play certain fairies, so I've played at most 10. So I'm actually just going to show you the 10 I've ever played, and why, and when, and why I've played them. And which ones are my favorites out of the each, which are the top 10. Number 10, Skelangel. Back when I was in, I went and say middle school, but um, elementary school when I first started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Skelangel was great for draw power. You didn't get a lot of draw power unless you were playing Pot of Greed. And I think at that time it was only Eliminator banned. So, I mean, this monster was great. You set it, it got attacked, it flipped, and not only were you protected for that attack, but Joshua drew a card. This is a great staple in Exodia decks back in my elementary school days. So yeah, that's why he's number 10, for nostalgia's sake. Number 9, Banisher of the Light. If you guys remember why Macro and Dimensional Fisher were set to 1, Banisher of the Light was probably in that combination. If you couldn't get Macro or Dimensional Fisher on the field right away, you played Banisher of the Light. It's because as long as this card would be face up on this field, any card sent to the graveyard was removed from play instead, which made it almost impossible back in that time for anything to happen because everything revolved around the graveyard and there was barely anything to bring back from the actual banish sale. So that's why he's my number nine. Because he uses it, he's part of an old combo I used to like. Now, number 8 is for nostalgia's sake only, and that is Wing Karibo level 10. Now, this card can only be special summoned with transcendent wings. It cannot be special summoned by other ways. During your opponent's battle phase, you can choose his face up card and destroy all attack mode monsters. All attack position monsters your opponent controls and inflict damage to your opponent equal to the combined original attack. That was crazy. And I felt bad for Kariba because everyone looked down on him. So to find a way for him to be just badass, I really enjoyed. I really liked it. So that's why he's my number eight. It's only for nostalgia's sake. My number seven, Marshmallow. A card that I actually use a lot, especially in my burn decks. Marshmallow's great. It's basically got a flip effect without even saying it's got a flip effect. If this card was attacked while face down, well guess what? The attacking player gains a thousand damage and it cannot be destroyed by battle. And the great thing about Marshmallow, it's level three. Do you know how else do you know who else can abuse level three monsters? Go back to Dinos and you'll see him. I ain't gonna spoil it. Go ahead, go look. You can pause the video. I'll wait. Alright, did you see it? Cool. So now it's off to number six. Number six, Honest. Honest is such a splashable monster. As long as you have a large light base deck. Because not only could it be used for attack and then sent back to your hand, but also because of the fact that you could actually send this card from your hand to the graveyard to take your opponent's power and use it against them. To punish them for being so powerful. And that's what I like about Honest. It shows that you have to be careful with the strength that you're given. So yeah. So that's why he's my number six. My number five is Vanity's Roller. Vanity's Roller is a special monster that can't be special summoned. But when he's on the field, your opponent can't special summon monsters either. Locking this down with a good Royal Decree plus um, Spell Canceler combo or Royal Decree um, Horus the uh, Black Flame level 8 combo literally locks your opponent from not being able to do anything. Which is really cool because it was great for a lot of lockdown decks back in the day. And he's getting some more play now, which is awesome. Will I ever splash him into a deck? No, that's why I play Emptiness. <laughs> Unless I was playing a fairy deck, I wouldn't be playing him now. I'm sorry, but he has a very great card and very splashable in today's meta. Just to fuck with the opponent and it only fucks with your opponent not you which is even better and that's why he's my number five now my number four and this is gonna be a shock is believe it or not Odin father of the Azar 
Why Odin? It looks like you got three monsters here, Wyvern, and one of them looks like they suck. Maybe two on your opinion. Why Odin at number four? Odin's at number four because I love the Nordics, but the problem was I really never got into the Nordics. And he really doesn't have any nostalgia or emotional attachment with me. He's got a great effect, yeah. You take three monsters, summon 4,000 attack monster easily. Once returned during your main phase, you can activate this card's effect and becomes unaffected by all spell and traps. And if this card would be to destroy, you can banish a Nordic Ascendant Tuner to bring him back and draw a card. So he's a very good card, but I just don't see him being used. I'm sorry. I mean, while I love to see him get used, definitely. I mean, while I'd be thinking about a deck to make it out of, maybe possibly one day. Right now, I actually got a list of decks right now that I actually want to look and, you know, because I at least want one deck of each type. The only problem is, the only problem is it looks like dragons are winning at two decks and right now it looks like so is zombies with two decks so yeah for now i'm not sure um i'm gonna try though but yeah that's my odin deck so i hope you guys enjoyed that um so well that's number four i mean i'm sorry it's not a bigger explanation of why he's good i mean there is no explanation it's odin number three moki moki king yes a lot of you are probably thinking, Wyvern, how can Moki Moki King be number three and not Odin? You know why? When it's going to remove from play or remove from the field, you can push them as many Moki Moki as you want. And that just makes them unbeatable. No, I'm joking. Um, the reason why is because I remembered from that episode of um, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX where... Jaden fought the little dude, the little Balowski, and I just I really enjoyed his deck as well as his motives. Like the little Balowski didn't worry about being the best or anything; he just wanted to chill. And that's I believe that even that everybody, including me, needs to take a lesson from little Balowski. Sometimes you just need to chill, and I believe that. I believe that sometimes you just need to chill and relax. And he and Moki Moki King is a perfect explanation of that. 300 attack, 100 defense, and no really good effect. He's just chilling on the field. He's being there. He's enjoying the moment he's actually being used. And that's what I like about Moki Moki King. He reminds you that well, everyone needs to chill. So that's why he's my number three. My number two is Mystical Beast of Circuit. Yes. We're bringing some Egyptian style down on this biatch. No, I'm joking. Well, this card is... Destroy this card if you don't destroy Temple of the Kings. I can respect that. And each time this card destroys a monster by battle, the destroying monster is banished, and then this card gains 500. So this card is not already already beefed up, but gets even more beefed up for every monster destroyed. Not to mention the fact is, it's a fairy. Yeah, when I first saw this card in the anime, you know what I thought? Fiend, insect, God knows what, nightmare from hell for arachnophobes. But when it, when people said, nah man, it's a fairy, I lied. I I didn't lie. I was like, you are a lying man. I, you are a lying son of a bitch. That's no way this thing could be a fairy. Fairies are supposed to be either prissy or angelic. This thing is neither. This is a badass monster. A demon. It has to be a fiend. And you know what? When I got my first copy of Mystical Bee Circuit, I was wrong. Mystical Bee Circuit was a fairy. And I was like, what the fuck, Konami? And next thing you know, I'm going to find fiends that are, that are, like, angelically beautiful and, like, heals you. But, yeah, I mean, I think that's why I like Mystical Beast Circuit, because he was such a shock. In the anime, he was badass. But to find him as a Yu-Gi-Oh card, as a fairy, it just shocks you, like, what? And that's what I like about him. That's why he's my number two. That feeling I realized when I noticed that when I came to um, learn that... He is all he is actually a fairy. 
It was crazy. It blew my mind. My number one, and probably one of the most hard-touching ones that I'm going to put on this list, is Guardian Hiatos. Now, I'm not a Raphael fanboy, even though I respect Raphael, but um, people ask me, why do I like Guardian Hiatos? And actually, it's because Guardian Hiatos from the anime reminds me of um, my fiancé dancing. In the anime, if you've never seen it, spoiler alert, which this was like over 10 years ago, so spoiler doesn't need to be alerted. Raphael was consumed by darkness, but thanks to Guardian Iatus, he was set free. He, Guardian Iatus saved him from his inner darkness. And just like Iatus did with Raphael, dancing did for me. Before I met dancing, I was... I went through some tragedy and I lost my faith into humanity. Now I ain't talking about the kind of people you see in here and it says, oh, I lost my faith in humanity, but still talk to people. No, I secluded myself from society. I didn't even talk to my family. It was dancing that when I fell in love with her and she fell in love with me and we shared our emotions for each other, that she helped me realize and remember what people are good for. And why people are important to us and she actually saved me from my own inner darkness I tell you what guys I've had a crazy childhood and I'm gonna tell you and be serious if it wasn't for dancing I wouldn't be sitting here right now doing this video in fact this channel would never have been existed because I wouldn't have been here long enough to make this channel many people tell me can you describe dancing in one word if I had to, I'd have to say Iatos. And only Yu-Gi-Oh! fanboys or Yu-Gi-Oh! show watchers would be able to understand the reference. Because she literally saved me from my own darkness. Just like Guardian Iatos saved Raphael's from his. And I'll forever be grateful for that. But that's my top 10, guys. If you guys have any questions, any reasoning, or it's just not your list at all, leave a description down below with your list of your top 10 favorite fairy types and stick around because we still got more types to go. So it's Deliverance signing out. Later guys.